and welcome to this week's vlog. Like, sent me a message saying, I'll ring you soon. A minute later, you rang me. We sat there, didn't we? For half an hour with him. Running tough. through it all, showing me all. Is there any more questions? Just unraveling this ready for Zeus. <laughs> Very tedious. Well, rolling it up is even worse. Okay. Ooh. Still at Icarus full curry. And. We've seen a bit of Zeus's progress, we're still training him on the line, we're still trying to build fitness. We've gradually increased a bit of muscle fitness, we've got his weight increased a little bit. We're going to see how his response is. We're not going to do many call-offs today, but we're going to have a nice big reward. A rabbit back leg, and he'll eat the whole lot. Oh, sorry. sorry. That's all right. So, still Icarus full cream. Zeus is on his training line still. Now we've gradually increased his weight, his muscles have started to build up a little bit. And that should hopefully actually give him a bit more energy. So we've got a bit of response, but we'll see. We're going to go for a couple of longer ones just to see if we've got that response. It's over there, Zeus. We need a dry rope. We might swap the ropes over. So, what you can actually see it's just how much heavier this rope is when it's wet and it causes actually a lot more drag than I want. I don't want him to be pulling the rope necessarily. Remember, I just want enough drag that he has to keep those wings moving. Luckily, we've got two ropes, so I think we're going to swap over tomorrow and use a drier one and dry this one out a bit. But obviously, when everything's sodden at this time of the year, nothing stays dry in the UK for very long outside. So a little tip, this guy here, you've noticed He's flying to the ground. I don't fly him to maybe a training tea perch like some of the birds we work with. If a golden eagle lands on a power line or a power box, there's a good chance that its wingspan, when they're wet, are gonna touch two poles and that bird will fry. It's got a huge wingspan, bigger than the smaller hawks we fly. So if Zeus has never been trained to land anywhere other than the ground, in his whole life, he's landed in one small tree once. I don't want him to see anything high up as a vantage point for hunting or anything like that, or a safe refuge because if I lose him, we don't fly near power lines. He doesn't have to go that far away to find his own power lines, does he? So he flies to the ground, but if you look, he's got a target mat. Started off as a full-size car floor mat, and then it was cut down. It's about 10 inches square or something like that now. It's a target mat, it keeps the food off the ground. It means he's not scanning in the grass when he's flying, hoping to find random bits of food laying in the grass. It's a target mat and that's where his food goes, not just on the ground. I actually know someone that went to do rope work with their trained eagle, their hunting eagle, and they started putting food on the ground. Very quickly, when the bird left the fist, it didn't go hunting. It scanned around all the time for food and then it taught it to scan for sitting hares that it didn't have to chase. So for sure, think about what you're doing and why. He's flown onto the ground, so he doesn't ever sit on power lines and power boxes, and he's got a target mat, so he doesn't think anywhere on the ground they might be hiding a nice tip bit of food for sure. Right, okay, off you go. Okay. You can hear he's got wet wings and he's pulling a wet rope. So hard work today. And literally, today's just about response and we're gonna call him back to a whole rabbit leg. Rabbit meat isn't the best quality meat, it's not high in calories, but in there is the bone and the marrow bone. He'll eat the whole thing and in 24 hours, he'll have digested the bone as well, how crazy is that? <laughs> oh, well done, boy. So we've got two lots of... Yeah, you can film from that side, but you might have to suddenly shove that under to stop it going on there yeah. or something. Okay, oh. And then I'm gonna run in and do the bits behind Oh, you. you're next door. Yeah. Okay. I'm ready with my contraption to catch the phone. There's Daddy. I'm going to start on the lolly side. Oh, okay. I'm ready. <laughs> Lovely. That was not easy filming. I had to turn it off.
Is it staying on top of that raft and it's all falling down your side? Um, these last ones are staying on because it's neater. I'd like to be able to just take up some wood paint, you see? Yeah, I'm trying to see you through the camera. Hello. <laughs> Oh, is it not meant to touch your skin? You, you can't get it off. Uh, it's on my hand. Yeah, well don't touch anything close or anything. It's like in pocket, it's worth a slug slide. Slug slide. Time for a Zeus update. It's nice to dry and light, but the irony of it is it's really short, so it's not going to any. We have a different rope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is short. <laughs> so we swap ropes to, to my other my other rope line, which is nice and dry. It seems somebody <laughs> somebody over the course of last summer has cut it in half and used it for something else so it's incredibly it? short and incredibly light so I think he's gonna have no excuses now his weight's still up he had a good feed yesterday but I've got to say this year very disappointing so far at how unfit he's got and how slow he's coming back on track but Very little drive to do anything, considering how he has been and how he should be. I'm not carrying it there, look, so so the food's there, I'm going to tell you that's probably, oh, I don't I know. I can beat you in the shop with it. 15 yards away, maybe. Oh, you can see it there. I don't know how I always pick up the camera when I've got food in my mouth. Flying Zeus didn't go to plan. So on to the next job. Okay, well today, this morning, we've spent the whole morning in a reasonably local school, about a 40 minute drive away. And I've got to say a big thanks to Zainab, because not only did she could have sort of get us into that school, maybe, maybe last year for the first time, so this was a repeat visit, I have to say, she's probably one of my most long-suffering teachers that's known me. I remember going, oh, you know, 11 years ago now, into a school where Zainab taught, and we was looking at, I think back then, I think it was rainforest animals. And I remember it clearly, because I can remember saying, those two boys just there, those two boys there, I'm very cross with them. We went to the butterfly farm on a school trip yesterday, and those two little boys there, they ran off into the bushes and we'd lost them. And they kind of went on safari in the tropical rainforest of the butterfly park. And I'll never forget that. I just imagine, can you imagine that as young boys running riot through a butterfly farm off the main drag, getting lost in the, in the plants and things, seeing what animals you could find. Anyway, we got back about lunchtime. Don't tell Mrs. Raptor Exotics, because I am on a diet. George and I did have a McDonald's. Don't tell her I said that. And unfortunately, the afternoon was supposed to be spent up at the Falconry Centre, putting lots of our frozen food away that was delivered and doing other things. And unfortunately for Emily and Joe, I couldn't go. And that meant, as usual, they were left with the job of humping heavy boxes of food into our freezers. So sorry, guys. And the reason we couldn't get there, I was waiting for a delivery of snakes. Now, if you've been watching our vlogs, you've known over this year we've bred various snakes and we've sold the babies to other snake collectors and we've bought in other species of snakes to grow on as part of our collection in the future. These are the last ones coming in because all of our last snakes have gone out as of today, our false water cobras. And these ones were a direct swap and exchange. We've got two Baron's racers in here. Sadly, they're both females because it's also nice to have a pair. But what it does mean is we can grow them in, grow them on swap one out for fresh blood, fresh genetics, an unrelated male. So we've got an unrelated pair, which is obviously always the best kind of stock to breed from. So let's have a look. They've been couriered down to us. They've come an awful long way from Northumberland. And Kirk, the guy these came from, you may remember, we went on a bit of a road trip a bit recently, and we got ourselves some 
but some are only wish. We got ourselves a yellow-tailed Kribo, which for sure, is one of the Drymarkon species, for sure is gonna be my favorite snake here because the indigo snakes, wow, they are snakes to have for sure. These aren't quite as special, but they don't know that. And to be honest, that's fantastic. They're fantastic snakes. Let's wrap them up. Let's have a look what we've got here. Live pigeons in there. Have a look at these. So, especially look at their noses. Baron's racers are arboreal. They're tree living, live in the understory, and incredibly well camouflaged with their colour and pattern. But they even have elongated noses to sort of break up that outline. Or is that what it's for? Does anyone actually know? To me, it definitely gives you that stalk-like appearance. Absolutely gorgeous snakes. They get large. Baron's racers get large. You see our blue beauty snakes. So for now, these will be set up in small hatchling boxes where we can quarantine them, keep an eye on them, and they'll be simply kept. They'll have a hiding place, they'll have water, they'll have substrate. But as soon as they start packing on the pounds, so to speak, and they start growing, they'll be going into their own enclosures, which will be fully arboreal with fake, or if we're lucky, once we move house, will we ever move house, plastic plants, or hopefully real plants, and a proper sort of mini ecosystem with fluorescent lighting, because these snakes spend their lives up in the trees, up in the branches, up in the leaves and bushes, and an environment that we can view them in like that is going to be by far, by far, the best setup to enjoy this lovely species and of course naturalistic for these guys too so have a look at this very much a tree snake in their actual feel very wiry very almost rigid like a vine so you can see how much these would look just like vines tendrils climbing up amongst the rainforest plants. Nice and chunky, they've been well fed. But I can't really explain how wiry and rigid these snakes are. Not all soft and supple like many snakes. Look at the stretch and the reach on that animal. So these can sort of, they can kind of plank, which I definitely can't do. But they can stretch right out rigidly and reach to other branches and slither across. But look at that face. Have a look, let's see what we can tell you. Look at that amazing appendage or rostrum on the end of their nose. How cool is that? And again, these are only hatchlings. These were hatched this year. These are going to grow huge. But I think these have got to go in a really naturalistic setup. Personally, I think. If we could do live plants, it just looked that bit better, but we'll see. For now, we've got to get them settled in. We've got to get them settled, happy, back feeding well, because often when we move our snakes, they do go off their food. Look at that, absolutely rigid and wiry. Let's put this one in a small container for now. So, we're in the reptile room right now, and Twice a week I do a deep clean and then every day in between we spot clean, we check water bowls and we feed as needed. It just depends on the animals and what they're up to behave. So it's a deep clean day today. I'm gonna well I'm not gonna bore you with cleaning up all the poo, but I'll try and show you a few of the creature creatures and creepy crawlies as we go along and just kind of see what we see. I try not to I'll cut out the boring stuff, but anything that I think is really interesting or looks particularly good. I'll tag on to this, this video and this vlog. This blue beauty is just about, about 24 hours away from shedding its skin. And as usual, he doesn't really want me in there with him. Let's see what happens. Come on. Check these out. African giant land snails. That's a pretty big snail. That's one of its babies. Huge creatures. seal themselves up into their shells they kind of go into hibernation and this big one has done that and it feels cool and that's not actually a good thing they don't last that long when they're shut down it's a temporary measure in their tropical climate where they come from so time to move my snails 
higher up in a reptile room where it's just a bit more tropical. Here's a great species. Looks like a hedgehog. Not a hedgehog. This guy is a lesser hedgehog tenrec. Keep like hedgehogs or pygmy hedgehogs. Live a long time. If you're thinking of getting a tenrec and you're in the UK, check out the UK tenrec rescue. Unfortunately, like a lot of exotic animals, people buy these things and you know what? They don't keep them very long. They get bored and they become unwanted. Crazy. The UK Tenrec Rescue, of course, they're going to make sure and help you learn all about their needs and care and keeping them. Different kinds of Tenrec. We've only got the lesser hedgehog Tenrec because he fits into my educational theme of hedgehogs. Although, bizarrely, his claim to fame is this guy's more closely related to an elephant than a hedgehog. How crazy is that? Let's let him go back to sleep, he's very nocturnal. These are really purely for school education with raptor exotics. And of course, if you're talking about a key topic like rainforest, every child knows or has heard of a boa constrictor. So a handy guy or a handy species to have on the team because it's a cult classic, isn't it? It's just one of those iconic animals that everybody's heard of. Boa constrictor. That's its English common name, and that's its scientific name. Nice when you can keep things that simple. Beautiful patterns, and a beautiful snake. They've even got a face, beautiful eyes, and they'll actually make eye contact with you, which is kind of quite unusual for a lot of lizards. They recognise you, they know who feeds them, and they live an exceptionally long time, so blue tongue skinks, for those serious people, fantastic pet lizard indeed, don't grow too big, they don't grow too big, but they do turn into beautiful personalities, and just great guys to have around, the blue tongue skink. So this is our sort of second down in size of our four blue beauty snakes. And this guy, he won't settle down. He's much better out than in. So when we're changing this guy's water or spot cleaning, it's actually a lot easier on my hands and arms if I get him out than leave him actually inside his mist. Because he's so vivid defensive, it's a constant onslaught while you're changing water and things. So. Well, this guy, out the viv, he's actually, although you wouldn't believe it, far more manageable than just leaving him in there. Wild creatures, the blue beauties, but their looks, attitude, makes this snake, or this species, well worth having around. Oh, can you stop doing that to my phone? Let's put him back in. He's grumpy. By the way, if you can see any blood on that snake, obviously it's not his, it's mine. Look away now if you're squeamish, because it's time for this guy to have some food. They only, of course, have frozen thawed. We don't feed anything live. But they are constrictors. That's how they kill their prey, and of course, he's not alive, but he's not going to take any chances. He doesn't want his lunch to get away any more than you want your lunch to get away. So we'll leave him in peace. Once he's satisfied he's killed it, of course it's already dead. He's then gonna proceed to swallow that rat hole. It's almost mesmerizing, isn't it? It's a giant African bullfrog. Pretty big old frog. 
easily capable of swallowing a frozen mouse or a thawed out frozen mouse with day old cockerel. These guys very much similar to Pac-Man himself. It's a huge mouth, a huge tummy and a huge appetite. The African giant bullfrog. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget, like and subscribe. See you next time. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> got <that> camera. <laughs> <laughs> Go then. Ooh, it's not really the end of the vlog because right now we're having a pub lunch and it's a real rarity. Yum yum. We're being naughty. We don't care. <laughs> <laughs> it's not right out of the way. It was in the summer.